You guys are gonna love these pens! Quill pens and dipping pens have been around for quite some time and are depicted in many early paintings around the world. As their name implies, the quill pens were made of the quills or feathers of birds. As education became more widely accessible and literacy became more widespread, these pens became the universal symbol of success and prosperity. Fast forward to modern day society, you'd see that even with the creation of ballpoint pens and pigment liners, dipping pens are still the go-to inking tool of professional illustrators, comic book artists, and mangaka alike. But why is that? Why are dipping pens still so beloved, even to this day? Because dipping pens are literally the best pen you will ever use, girl. Yes. <laughs> and today, I'll prove it to you by showing you everything you need to know to get started using dipping pens like a professional. I'll be showing you how to choose the best brand, the best pen size for your unique art style, how to clean them, how to prevent clogging, inking techniques, the best paper to use. Girl, I've got everything for you in this video. <laughs> So be sure to watch it till the very, very end, guys, because I promise you, you will get so much out of this video. And without further ado, let... So you keep referring to them as quill pens and dipping pens. So are they like the same thing or... I'm so glad you asked that, chap. <laughs> Got the first thing we're going to be talking about. So without further ado, let's get started. Yas, boo-boo. Roll the footage. Quill pens are the oldest form of the dipping pen. They used to be made from bird's quills, aka bird's feathers. They used to hollow out the stem and dip it into some ink and write with it. Its design later changed so that it was now made up of a metal quill or a metal nib and a wooden handle sometimes made of ivory or metal as well. Both the quill pen and the dipping pen do not have internal ink wells. You have to keep dipping them into ink as you're working with them. Think of it as kind of like if you're a painter. You have to keep dipping your brush into the paint so that you continue to work with it. So do not get confused if I go back and forth between saying quill pens and dipping pens. I'm talking about the exact same thing. <laughs> Fun fact, <laughs> the word for pen in Spanish is pluma which comes from the word plumage, which means feathers. So to this day, there's a little bit of our past even in our language. Girl, how do you know which one to choose for you? I got you! <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. The best way to find the pen and nib size that is perfect for you is try out a whole bunch of different quills and pens. Because the honest truth is, Quill pens and dipping pens are not a one-size-fits-all type of thing. A quill pen that works really well for me might not necessarily work really well for you. So a lot of different brands such as Speedball and Deleter have created sample packs for people like you who want to try out different types of quills and nibs and see which one really suits your hand. Every single one of these nibs and quills draw completely different than the other. Some draw real thick, some draw real thin, some are just like, oh my gosh, where have you been all my life? This is a super inexpensive and fun way to try out all sorts of different quills and nibs and you will find your dipping pen soulmate, because I know I have. <laughs> A few of you may be wondering, why should I even try out these pens when I'm already using microns and all types of other pigment liners? I'm going to tell you right now, the honest truth is, there are so many pros to using dipping pens. First of all, they're super inexpensive, super affordable, and one little nib can literally last you like two plus years if you take really good care of it. And I'll tell you exactly how to take care of them later in this video. Also, the versatility and just how delicious they feel when you draw with them. They're literally the type of art supply that once you get the hang of them, you'll literally start thinking to yourself, what was I thinking using anything else? Where have you been? Oh my life, y'all! I will warn you, there is a bit of a learning curve. It does take a good amount of practice to really master them, but that's okay because that's part of the journey and part of the fun of being an artist, experimenting, just stretching your abilities, trying new things, and just 
learning who you are as a creator. So do not be afraid of the learning curve or if you find it difficult at first, do not worry boo boo. You will get it. Mama Mushroom believes in you. Hashtag love my babies. Hashtag I believe in you. <laughs> the one last thing you need to know before I start showing you how to ink with dipping pens is learning the difference between the brands and the handles and their nibs because every company makes them a little different. So I'm going to start off with talking about Speedball. Speedball, if you didn't notice, the set comes with two handles, a black handle and a brown handle. Now, the black handle can only fit the larger size nibs, while the brown handle can only fit the smaller size nibs. So you'll need different handles for different nibs and you'll know immediately when you hold the nib which one goes into which, I, I swear. <laughs> Now, the brown handle is a bit thin. It's a very comfortable handle, but I highly recommend if you are choosing to create something that's very high in detail and will take you hours to create, I highly recommend you get one of those little pencil squishy thingies that you can slip over the handle to make it more comfortable to use because you're going to end up with carpal tunnel and a claw hand. <laughs> However, Tachikawa, which is a Japanese brand, does not have two different handles for the different nib sizes. They created one handle with two rings at the top, and the outer ring, which is the larger ring, will be able to hold all of the larger quills and nibs, while the smaller ring in the center is made to hold the smaller nibs. Now the thing is, that gets me pissed off, is that the quills and nibs from any brand that you use do not fit the handles of other brands. Unless you're like me and you kind of alter them a little bit. <laughs> uh-uh, I'm gonna make you fit, you little But keep that in mind when trying out the different handles and the different nibs and experiment and see if maybe they do fit into the handle that you prefer. Now, when you first get the nib that you want to use, some brands cover the nibs in a little bit of oil so you'll need to wipe off that oil with a t-shirt or some quality cotton. Try not to use tissue paper because it might clog the actual quill a little bit. Put it into the handle, take your handle in your hand, and dip it into your ink. Do not over dip your quill. If you go any deeper than that, you risk ink going into the handle and that's just a mess. Once you've dipped it, hold it above your ink well and shake it once or twice to get any excess ink off of it and then go ahead and start inking on your paper. Now the amount of pressure you should be applying should not be more than the pressure you'd apply to create a soft light pencil sketch. Every 40 seconds to a minute you will need to re-dip your quill into the India ink. The reason for that is two things. One, depending on how much you've already inked, you may be running out of ink on the nib. So you'll need to get some more ink. Reason number two for redipping the quill is you may have been inking for a long time and you don't want the ink to dry on the quill. So you need to redip it so that the ink does not get dry on the quill. Never let it dry on the quill. And if you accidentally do let it dry, do not worry boo boos. Simply dip it in some warm water, swish it around a little bit, and with a t-shirt or quality cloth, just wipe it down gently. If you don't want to use a t-shirt, you can use old underwear. Don't want to use that? That's all right, I understand. <laughs> you can get Vista paper towels. No, not sponsored. But I realized that Vista paper towels are super high quality, are very cloth-like, and will not, for anything, clog your quills. So I highly recommend you getting a whole roll for yourself and your quills. <laughs> Some of you may be thinking to yourself, that's a lot of work and a lot of steps for just inking. It honestly isn't. Once you get used to it, it becomes second nature. So do not get overwhelmed by the numerous steps. It really is not that bad at all. It's a super fun process. I adore it. And once you get used to it, you really don't realize that you're wiping sometimes, you're dipping it sometimes. You don't notice it at all. And after you're done inking, simply take your pen swish the nib inside some warm water and wipe it down with your Vista paper towel or with your t-shirt and sit it in a jar or a cup 
nib facing upward to be able to air dry and so that it won't get rusty and it'll stay super pristine and beautiful. Many of you have asked me if you need to buy that special bottle of cleaner for your quills. You really don't. How to pick the best paper for your dipping pens. Now, the thing to remember is a dipping pen's nib at the very, very tip of it, that's metal, y'all, okay? So you cannot use thin paper with it. As paper gets wet with the India ink, the very, very pointy tip of your dipping pen has the potential to scrape through your paper. Especially for those of you who are not used to using them, you might apply far too much pressure breaking your paper. So <laughs> what you want to do is use quality thick paper like Bristol paper or smooth vellum. You can also use comic or manga paper because remember, comic and manga paper are formulated, especially made to be used with dipping pens. Pro tip! to prevent smudging with your quill pens and India ink. If you are right-handed, start inking from the upper left-hand corner and work your way down to the lower right-hand corner. And if you are left-handed, start inking from the upper right-hand corner and work your way down to the lower left-hand corner. Why am I telling you to ink this way? Because think about it. If you're right-handed and you start inking from the right, this ink is still going to be wet and this part of your hand is going to smear all your work, okay? So if you're right-handed, start inking from the upper left-hand corner and as you're drawing, you're inking away from that area. So whatever you've inked up here is left alone. There's no chance of you smudging it or touching it. It's allowed to dry in peace, okay? And after you are done with your illustrations, take your illustration and put it on the side somewhere that no one's going to touch it and let it dry for about 30 minutes to an hour. A lot of the times they're going to be dry way before that, but I'm one of those people that I want to make sure it is 100% dry before I touch it or put it in a portfolio. I'm paranoid like that, okay? <laughs> if you have any more questions, guys, please be sure to leave your questions in the comments down there below. I love reading your comments and I also reply to just about everybody. So. Leave on with some questions. <laughs> Please let me know what you thought about this video. Show your support by giving a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell because YouTube is crazy these days, okay? <laughs> let me know. Are you guys excited to use quill pens and dipping pens? Have you used them already? What was your experience? Do you love them? Are you as obsessed about them as I am? Let me know in the comments, guys. And until next time, please take care, God bless, and do not be afraid to nerd out. Please take care, guys.